Hi, my name is Adrian Ho, and I'm the Seoul Academy Trainer of SMA Australia. Today, I will show you the commissioning and troubleshooting of an RS-485 Sunny Webbox. Before you start, please consult with the local IT staff as some sites may have tight restrictions for devices connecting in the network. You will be able to use the Webbox Assistant software to assist you in setting up the Webbox. However, if you experience any trouble with this tool, you can follow this video to install the Webbox manually. Get a computer that is connected to the local network or plug in your laptop to the network. Then click in the Start field. Click on the Run tab. In here, type in CMD, which stands for Command and then press enter. OK. You now see a black dot screen. Now type ipconfig forward slash all and then press enter. You will see a lot of network details coming up. Scroll up until you see IPv4 address. Write this down, which is, in this case, 10.3.28.50. On a piece of paper, also write down the corresponding subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server. For our example here, we all have those as 10.3.28.1. We are not ready yet. The IP address that ends with .50 in this example is only representing the IP address of this computer that you are now logged on. Another computer next to you or the printer may have an IP address that ends with .33 or 24. The server automatically allocates an IP address when the devices in the network are turned on. We need to find an available IP address for the web box and put it on static IP. To search, we just have to make a random guess. Here, let's try .51. So back in the DOS screen, let's just type in ping, P-I-N-G, followed by the IP, which is 10.3.28.51, which is the one that we're trying to test it if, if it is available in the network. After pressing enter, you see a lot of signals bouncing back and forth to this address. This means that the .51 address is occupied and has another device there. You cannot set the web box to this .51 address as it will clash to the other devices. We need to make another guess. Here, let's try .16. So we'll do another ping. So in the DOS screen, type in PING spacebar 10.3.28.16. You see here, destination host unreachable. This means that there is no device on the other end. So you can use the .16 address for the web box. Please consult with the IT staff as some IP address might be reserved for other purposes. So I strongly recommend to have an IT staff so they can provide you with all these details directly. Write this new IP address for the web box down to your sheet. So and then we'll go to step two. Step two, changing the laptop setting. Step two is setting up the web box, which most installers have most difficulty. Now we have the local network address. We need to program it into the web box, but how? The web box default factory IP setting is 192.168.0.168. For residential clients that have only just a standard modem router, if the IP address that you obtained in step one is very similar to the web box default IP address, then you can basically skip this step and go to step six directly. Now connect the blue crossover cable that's applied to you and connect the web box and your laptop. Remember there's a red band in the blue crossover cable that identifies it. Then power up the web box. We need to change the laptop setting so it is similar to the web box factory setting. To do this, first turn off the Wi-Fi setting in your laptop, then go to Start. Go to the Run tab as well, and then type in 
ncpa.cpl and press enter. You will come to the network connections window. Right click in the local area connection. If you have multiple of these local area connections, just try the first one. Right click on there and click on properties. Locate and select internet protocol TCP IP version 4 and click on properties. Here you will see that the laptop IP setting is set to obtain an IP address automatically. When the laptop is plugged into a server, the server will allocate an available IP address to the laptop. Here we have the laptop connected directly to the web box, so there will be no IP address. Select use the following IP address and put in an address similar to the web box default IP setting. SMA recommends you to use 192.168.0.100. Remember, the web box is 192.168.0.168. We're just making a similar address so it matches to the web box address. Click on the next row and the subnet mask will show automatically, showing 255.255.255.0. The rest are OK, so press OK for this screen and close the other windows. Step 3. Opening the browser for the web box. Open an internet web browser. Here we will use Google Chrome. The web page will not load as we have disabled the wireless internet and we are only connecting to the web box. In the address field at the top, type in the web box default IP address, which is 192.168.0.168 and press enter. If the web page doesn't load immediately, check the lights at the web box. A web box should have minimum three green lights, power, system and report. Also check the signal lights at the RJ45 patch cable port if they are flashing. The cable might be defective or your laptop network port might be defective or even turned off. Cross-check the settings in step 2 in case you have put in the wrong details. Is your web box brand new from the box? Or possibly has been used in another site? Try to use a paperclip and perform a 5 second reset at the rear side of the web box. Do not rely on the lights to change as they most likely will remain the same. Just count by heart. Refresh the web page. If 192.168.0.168 still doesn't load, then carry out a full factory reset, which is holding down to the reset button for 30 seconds until most of the LED lights turn red. You can then wait for three minutes. Normally, the page should load in your web browser and we can go to step four. Step four, detecting devices. Type in the default password in lowercase sma then this will bring you into the web box screen. There are menu buttons at the top right hand side of the screen. Home, web box and plan. If you already have devices connecting to the web box for quite some time, this device page would show first with the devices in the left menu list. Alternatively, you can perform a manual detection by selecting the detection tab. The web box is not counted as a device itself as we are logged in already. A device is an inverter, a sensor box, a meter connection box. If you have two inverters and one sensor box in your system, you will need to put in three in the number of detection field. Here we will only put in two as we have one inverter and one sensor box connected. So we type in two and then press start detection. The system will load and find the devices and download the description. Make sure that the inverters have minimum DC on. AC is not necessary for RS-485 communication. The detection process will not complete until all devices are found. Do not interrupt the detection process until it completes and show all device found. Here you can see that the web box has found the sensor box and the inverter. It is now attempting to download the unit's description do not interrupt this process. If the screen stalls, just redo the detection step. Now you see that it says device detection finished. 
Now click on OK and it will bring you back to the device screen. Devices that are in normal operation will show a green tick. Devices that are not well detected will show a grey dotted icon. If that's the case, you will need to perform a full detection once again. If you have a sensor box connected, please check the spot value by selecting the sense device and click spot value. Check the ambient temperature, the wind speed and the module temperature. See if they are having a correct value. Pay attention to the ambient temperature. If it's showing negative 273 degrees, it means that the wiring is incorrect. Step 5. Changing the web box network setting. Now with all devices detected, we can change the web box network setting. Go to the web box tab on the top right hand side, click on it, then click on network tab. Here change the network details that we have written down in step 1. Once you have typed in the information, make sure they are correct. Press save at the bottom side of the screen. The system will prompt for a confirmation. Check the details as once you've pressed confirm, there's no going back. Step 6. Connecting web box to network and change computer network setting. The screen will say that the web box is now changed to the new IP address. You can now unplug the blue crossover cable and connect the web box to the local network with the red patch cable that's delivered. Also, connect your laptop to the local network with an extra patch cable that you've got. Remember in step 2 that we have changed the laptop setting to 192.168.0.100? We need to change it back to auto detect so the server can allocate an IP address to the laptop. Repeat the steps in step 2. Click on the start menu, click on the run tab, ncpa.cpo and press enter. Find local area connection and properties once again. Locate T internet protocol version 4 and go on properties. Change the network setting back to obtain an IP address automatically. Click OK for the window and close all remaining windows. Step 7. Log in to Webbox and change settings. Open a web browser then type in the IP address of the web box, the new IP address, which is 10.3.28.16 for this example, and press OK. The web box screen will come up once again. The password is still lowercase sma. Now we will set up the basic setting for the web box before we can register it to Sunny Portal. First select the web box tab on the top right hand corner, then settings tab. Click on change to change the time zone. This is important, if you have this time zone incorrect, the data in Sony portal would be shown generating in midnight. You can also change the time and date and save the screen. Secondly, go to the web box tab and then data transfer. In here, the plant name is the Sunny Portal plant name that you wanted to show. You can always change this plant name at a later stage via Sunny Portal. Here we'll do, just do SMA Australia web box test. Upload frequency is how often the web box will upload data to Sunny Portal. You can change this to 20 times between the certain time period. You would like to set the maximum upload attempts to unlimited as well. Plant identifier is the fingerprint for the web box. When you perform a full factory reset, it will give itself a new plant ID. To avoid clashing with another web box that is already registered in Sunny Portal, just simply delete this field and type something unique. Let's say your job number, here we will put in SMA AUS test 001. The operator email is the email where Sunny Portal will send the activation email. If you are an installer, you should be putting the company's support email address so it will have all the registered sites under the same email. 
When the webbox is registered online, you can then add the client's email or the IT staff email address through Sunny Portal. Here I will use my email address. If the site has proxy server settings, you can also change it here. For our test case here, we don't have any. When everything is done, you can press save. Step 8. Registering webbox to Sunny Portal. Now we are good to register the webbox online. Go to the webbox tab on the top and then info. You can simply click register. The current time and date at the top row should be the up to date information. Wait for the screen to refresh itself while the webbox is contacting Sunny Portal. The time and date for this row will change. Here we see the status is failed to connect to Sunny Portal. If this appears, it means that something is wrong in the network side. Check for proxy server, DNS or gateway. See if there's any network restrictions on site as well. If it appears OK, then you will receive an email from Sunny Portal saying your site is registered. You can now close the browser and laptop. I hope this tech tip helps you in registering a web box online to Sunny Portal. If you would like to know more about the SMA communication product range, log into www.sma-australia.com.au and click on the Solar Academy tab for the latest training dates. My name is Adrian Ho, and I'll see you in my trainings. Mm -hmm.